Subscribe to our channel and also press the bell icon to never miss an update from Kautilya's Fincast. Welcome to Kautilya's Fincast for April 11th to 20th, 2021. Let's begin with corporate news. Microsoft Corp is in advanced talks to buy artificial intelligence and speech technology company Nuance Communications Incorporated at about $16 billion. Amazon India announced the launch of its Mentor Connect program, which is aimed at accelerating the growth of startups and emerging brand owners enrolled under its Amazon Launchpad initiative. Ant Group Company will apply to become a financial holding company, overseen by China's central bank, overhauling its business to adapt to a new era of tighter regulation for internet companies. Nike Fashion, the fashion e-commerce platform of Nike, announced the acquisition of online jewelry brand Pipa Bella. Pipa Bella will continue to offer its services on its website and also extend its portfolio under the Nike Fashion platform. The Nvidia Grace server processor is made on ARM architectures, and makes it the largest chip maker yet to adopt the British firm's technologies, which have been threatening American giant Intel's business worldwide. HSBC has banned customers of its online share trading platform from buying or moving into their accounts MicroStrategy Incorporated stock, a message seen by Reuters showed, calling it a virtual currency product. Maruti Suzuki's decision to focus on improving the sales of its G powered vehicles have paid off despite the pandemic impact. In FI 21 sales of Maruti's gas-based vehicles increased by 48.11% to 1,57,000 units, its highest ever. The new structure envisages Airtel Digital Limited, folding into the listed entity, Bharti Airtel. This will now house all of the digital assets Wink Music, Airtel Xtreme, Airtel Thanks, Mitra Payments, Airtel Ads, Airtel IQ, Airtel Secure, Airtel Cloud and all future digital products and services. SoftBank Vision Fund 2 is expected to invest $450 million in Swiggy, in a deal that will mark the Masayoshi Sun-led SoftBank Group Corporation's first direct bet in the food tech sector in India. Credit Suisse Group AG was sued by a pension fund, that alleges the bank misled investors, and let high-risk clients including Greensill Capital and Archigos Capital Management, take on too much leverage, in one of the first lawsuits since the twin debacles. Maruti Suzuki had increased prices of its offerings, in January to offset the rise in input cost and the management, had guided for another round of price, increase by 1.6% as the input cost keep rising. Amazon Pay, the fintech arm of Amazon India, said that it has onboarded close to 5 million merchants, across its various payment solutions and announced, the launch of its new Amazon Pay for Business app, to simplify the payment needs of small and medium enterprises. Ant Group is exploring options for founder Jack Ma, to divest his stake in the financial technology, giant and give up control, as meetings with Chinese regulators signaled to the company that the move could help draw a line, under Beijing's scrutiny of its business. According to the company, Triozor has become the largest selling, three-wheeler electric cargo carrier in the country, with a market share of 59% in the segment. IT major tech Mahindra has acquired Digital Owners, a hybrid cloud and DevOps services provider, for $120 million, about Rs 898 crores, to augment hybrid cloud offerings for enterprise customers globally. Container company Mesk announced the launch of a dedicated weekly double-stack train service between Gurugram and APM terminals to cater to the automotive sector. Toshiba Corporation rebuffed a takeover proposal from private equity firm CBC Capital Partners, saying the proposal didn't have enough detail to be considered and Toshiba preferred to remain a public company. Let's begin with market news. Bank stocks fell the most amid worries of asset quality amid a surge in COVID cases. The banking index dropped 4%, hitting a fresh four-month low. Bitcoin rose 1.32% to $60,555.97 breaking above $60,000 for a second time in 10 days. The world's biggest and best-known cryptocurrency is up 118.3% from the year's low of $27,734. 
a severe adjudication order imposed a fine of rupees 25 crores on yes bank and fines of rupees 50 lakh to rupees 1 crore on senior executives of its private wealth management team Infosys Limited gained 3% to hit a 6-year high after the country's second largest IT services firm consider a share buyback program the stock later paired gains in a weak market and was down 1.5% the Indian rupee weakened past the 75 mark to hit a nine-month low against the dollar as foreign portfolio investors pulled money from local stocks and bonds amid a worsening coronavirus crisis. Indian markets opened nearly 2.4% amid likely a complete lockdown in Maharashtra and more states imposing localized curbs as COVID-19 cases continued to surge. The Indian rupee has turned into Asia's worst performing currency from being the best in the previous quarter. It's poised for more losses as a resurgence in coronavirus cases to a record threatens to hamstring the economy. Aditya Birla Capital Limited and Sun Life, India, AMC, will together sell a 13.5% stake in their asset management joint venture. Dabar India Limited joined the elite club of 1 trillion rupee market cap with its shares hitting a fresh record high. The stock touched an all time high of 579 rupees and 90 paise intraday. Citibank's India consumer retail business is up for grabs, as the global lender will exit the country along with 12 other geographies completely. The retail basket includes credit cards, deposit accounts, wealth management, and its mortgage portfolio. S&P 500 and Dow hit an all-time high, as Morgan Stanley wrapped up earnings with a profit surge, while optimism about a solid economic rebound put main indexes on course for weekly gains. Turkish Central Bank banned the use of cryptocurrencies as a form of payment from April 30th, saying the level of anonymity behind the digital tokens brings the risk of non-recoverable losses. Rising defaults have prompted India to tighten oversight of corporate bond sales, causing issuance to slump in a blow to a long-sought goal of expanding the market. The frenzy around digital tokens is taking its zaniest turn, yet in the price of a token created as a joke, buckling the crypto trading system at Robinhood markets. These have remained net buyers of equities for the second month in a row in April, while FIIs continued to sell stocks in the month as benchmark indices turned lackluster. Paytm announced that its wholly owned subsidiary, Paytm Money, is going to enable Indian retail investors with access to top tech stocks from the US in association with Mirai Assets NYSE Fang Plus ETF. Securitization volumes in the January to March quarter surged to around Rs 40,000 crores, the highest in 2020-21 fiscal. Cryptocurrency exchange Bitex has started providing investment declaration reports for all its retail and institutional investors, becoming the first exchange in India to comply with recent amendments to the Companies Act 2013. Let's begin with economy news. Large-scale bond buying and money printing may result in a glut of rupees, causing them to depreciate against the dollars. The foreign exchange market pushed the dollar 1.56% high against Indian currencies. The early analysis has been identified about 1,100 products, including washing machines, ACs, refrigerators, spices, tobacco, cotton fabrics, textiles, and leather that can see high exports through the pacts. The Indian banking system's weak loans are expected to be 11 to 12 percent of gross loans. The credit losses will decline to 2.2 percent of total loans for fiscal 2022 and 1.8 percent for fiscal 2023. Job losses have started hitting the gig economy with sharp rises in COVID-19 cases during the second wave. A private research report suggests that the unemployment rate has started rising since April. Retail and recreation activity across India had dropped by 25% as of April 7 compared with February 24. This was mirrored in the Reserve Bank of India's March Consumer Confidence Survey. Real GDP growth in Q2 Pisal year 21 contracted 7.5% year-on-year, suggesting a strong rebound from lows of Q1 fiscal year 21. This follows a huge fall of 23.9% year-on-year in Q2 2020 caused by the COVID-19. With the focus on micro-containment zones to deal with the current wave of infections, as opposed to nationwide lockdown, 
the impact on economic activity would be less severe than that seen in 2020. The localized lockdowns in the key economic hubs can cost the economy an average of $1.25 billion each week and may shave off 140 bits per second from the Q1 nominal GDP. The government announced an economic stimulus come relief package between March 26 and May 17 last year to jumpstart recoveries. The centers has pegged the magnitude of the package at Rs 20.97 lakh crore. The industry has the potential to compete with global leaders. It must work with the government to grow by 10 to 12 percent per year for the next 10 years, and more importantly, grow responsibly in series. The economic fundamental factors are estimated to weaken the Indian rupee and the expected US dollar to Indian rupee to trade in the range of 72.8 to 76.8 levels in the month ahead. India's economy came to a grinding halt after a lockdown in March 2020. The GDP contracted 23.9% in the April to June quarters. However, as the restrictions were eased, the rebound was sharp. Night curfews and weekend lockdowns imposed by various state governments pose a threat to India's economic recovery. Malls, showrooms, and branded shops across the country are largely empty due to government imposition. The Indian Army, Navy, and Air Force are likely to embrace next-generation 5G technology to bring AI and unmanned vehicles to center stage in a bid to compete with the most advanced armed forces worldwide. The street is concerned that these partial lockdowns could slow down the pace of the economic recovery, which was scheduled to happen in the second half of the fiscal year 2021-22. The IMF expects the global economy to stage a strong recovery, growing by 6.0%, the fastest pace since its records began 40 years ago, with a growth of 4.4% in 2022. The urban unemployment was at 10.72% in the week ended the 18th of April, as against 9.81% in the week ended the 11th of April and 7.21% in the week ended the 4th of April. In the state of Maharashtra, in the pandemic with mobility trends to retail and recreation places down 66%, public transport declining 47%, and mobility trends to workplaces slipping 48%.